Hello and welcome to the first episode of What Do You Want to Know About Guitar Building. Now, first things first, this is an ongoing series that I want to keep on making better and better as I go. So if you have any questions on what you'd want to learn, please leave a comment down below. Here was a comment that I got concerning headstock design. Personally, I've always found headstock design to be a complete pain in the ass. It's so hard to get a good looking headstock just the way you want. But there are certain things that you have to keep in mind when you're designing one. So I'll just go through those two. I'll do a three aside headstock and a six in line headstock design so you can follow along and figure out what is the best approach for you. And yeah, let's get to it. One of the first things that we want to consider is a center line. Everything starts off with a center line, so let's just draw that real quick. Very rough and crude as it is. Now, fairly standard of guitars, six string guitars especially, is to have a 43 mil nut. I mean, it's, or 60, 62, 42 and a half. Let's just do a 43 mil nut. Having a good protractor helps out a hell of a lot. These Incra rules, rulers are so unbelievably good and uh, well worth the money that they're asking. So what did I say, 43 mil nut. Okay, so that's our nut. Now, the high E and low E, I usually place three and a half millimeters inward. Uh, I used to do three, but I very quickly learned that three and a half gives an even better result. So there's a couple of ways that I can do that. One of the things would be going and using a ruler set to zero, then marking three and a half. Now this is gonna be very crude because I'm using a pen, but for the purpose of this video, it only makes sense that I use a pen so you can actually see what I'm doing. Those are now my high E and my low E. Then I move on to a string spacing rule. These are very, very nifty tools and all you have to do is figure out where your E is placed and then use this accordingly. Almost got that right, so let's move it over a little bit. Nope. Nope, going in the wrong direction, so... Yep, that seems about right. So now I have my high, my two E's and then they're on two different levels. So there's these lower ones and the higher ones. Now I have both of the E's on the higher slots. So I'm gonna use only the higher slots to mark out the different strings here. Now that gives you your string spacing. Now the next step is that with most things, you want to have straight string pull. It's not a must, but it does help out a hell of a lot when it, coming, when it comes to actually designing headstocks. So let's do that real quick. So I'm just using the fret slots as they were and drawing on and making sure it's straight. Having a good set of rulers, all different kinds of rulers is really key to making good guitars. Oh, I'm missing one. Let's get that in there too. There. Now, what did I say? Uh, let's do let's do the six in line first. So let's presume that this is your neck now. Oh, tapering off. Not quite that wildly, but tapering off anyways and doing the lower horn or lower scoop, perhaps doing the high scoop like that. This just gives you your two points of contact if you're having, if you basically have a guitar stand or a wall mount or something like that. And then what you can do is utilize your ruler again and get a straight line you don't have to do this. This is something that I just find useful. This is gonna be an extremely, extremely bad looking headstock, by the way, but it gets the point across. Now, what you have to bear in mind 
is let's see if I have any tuners anywhere around. I don't. But what you have to bear in mind is the string doesn't attach to the tuners exactly here. Like if the string comes here, it doesn't go into the tuner there. It turns around and twists around the pole. So more than likely your pole for your tuner is gonna be around there. Um, now, again, I realized just now that I started doing a reverse headstock. Doesn't matter if you're doing reverse or uh, traditional headstock, the traditional way around, it works just the same. So you can imagine that right now I'm drawing this to your side. So this would be your low E and this would be your high E and you're seeing it the right way around as it were, or left-handed. Now, in most cases, you have your tuner holes about 10 to 12 mil away from the edge of the headstock. So I'm gonna do 12 mil off the side of the headstock, like so. And that gives me right around there, there, there. Oh, that's the middle line, so not there. There, there, and there for the strings. And that's a very easy solution. If the string's coming this way and you want to have a straight string pull, just place your tuner hole right off the edge. So now you have your string coming around and it wraps around like this which should ensure that you have straight string pull all the way. There you are. Now that you have those set, you can very, very easily check. Now, just from eyeballing, <coughs> I didn't get them exactly exact, but these aren't exact round shapes either. So <laughs> they aren't exactly the same distances apart. You can see that the, this is a much smaller gap than this, for example, and then this is smaller than that. But if you manage to draw out, always keep on measuring, making sure that everything is symmetrical in the right way. Uh, you should be very, very easily getting the same distance between each. For instance, like here, if I were to make everything 25 millimeters apart, as this gap was, then this would situate itself more here. The next one would situate itself here. Now, don't plan things out with a pen. Use a pencil because you're bound to be going back and adjusting things and erasing things. But if you have pen lines that you can erase, then you are kind of screwed. Let's do something like that. Extremely ugly scoop. We can make it a heavy metal headstock. There, very crude, very sharp, pointy. Very crude, very sharp, very pointy, uh, metal -y headstock. But hey, let's do the same thing again, but a three aside. So again, let's draw on our center line, then do a 43 mil nut like so, then three and a half mil from each side for the E strings like so. And string spacing. Doing this fairly quick because you have already seen what this process is like. Now there's absolutely nothing wrong with not doing a straight string pull headstock. I just personally prefer them because of the lack of hassle. Some believe it to give you better tuning stability. But if you have a well-cut nut, that shouldn't be an issue either. But it's not wrong to say that it will improve your tuning stability because it more than likely will. Okay, let's 
to make another very gaudy headstock here. Roughly like so. Maybe a little bit like that. Make the other side match. This is a horrible headstock, by the way. Oh God, this is, this is so bad. <laughs> okay, well, there you have the ridiculously ugly headstock that you would never want in a million years, but yeah, I'm not making things any better. Three aside headstocks I've always kind of struggled with design wise, but hey, gets the job done. Now, again, I can do it with the same methodology of having 12 mil from each side, but as you can notice, it has a little swoop going into it. So instead, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start off with basically one string here. I'm gonna have the E, other E around there. And now I'm going to use 25 mil as a meeting point, or 25 mil as the point at which. It's hard to talk and draw at the same time, but I'm gonna use 20 mil as, 20 mil, 25 mil as the distance between the tuners. Now it's very tightly packed here. You can spread them apart a little bit more if you wish. Uh, we might actually wanna do that just for case in point here. I will add another five mil, so I'll do 30. And when it comes to tuning stability and the right type of tension on your strings, usually your G is the one that has the most issues. So if that's further along and has, has a longer scale length, so to speak, then it is more likely to stay tensioned up a little bit better. So that's also a nice thing about reverse headstocks, where the, the thicker strings have somewhat of a longer scale. I mean, the scale length is always determined by the knot, but the actual length of string is longer for the thicker strings, which usually improves tuning stability by a hell of a lot. You don't need that much tension on the thinner strings, so they don't need to be as long. But the longer your thicker strings are, so your bottom strings are, then the more likely they are to stay in tune a little bit better and be tensioned up about the same as your higher strings would be. This is why multi-scale instruments have the fan going so that basically the longer scale length is for the bass side. So you get that extra length, which gives you that extra tension and multi-scale instruments are a certain thing that we can tackle later on. I can do a whole episode on multi-scale. That's not the case in point here. The whole point here is just to kind of design headstocks. And I just designed two really ridiculously ugly headstocks. I mean, this isn't that bad. This is just horrible but the main idea here is how you can do that so i have the six aside where i basically utilized going from the edge of the headstock and then marking out the connecting points and then on the three aside i marked out distances in between the different tuning pegs so those are two different styles on how you can approach headstock design there's Definitely many ways of doing it, but this is the two different ways that I found to be most useful for myself. All right, so I hope you learned something from that episode. If you have any questions regarding any sort of guitar building things, um, please comment down below. If there's anything that came to mind from this video specifically, yeah, let me know. I wanna know how I can make better content for you guys in the future. I'm not sure if I'm actually lit up properly but holy hell is that light very very bright all right i'm gonna go and uh continue on making videos and you guys go and make dust yeah.